as is my want, um, I'll take a certain distance from uh, the whole question to start off with anyway. And recall that the uh, position in, of Germany in Europe uh, has historically uh, been very difficult. Uh, there has been talk uh, over the centuries of a German Sonderweg or a particular German path which would neither be east nor west. Um, and this has uh, been the uh, source of many difficulties for uh, European security. Uh, however, there was a very important moment in 1952 in March uh, when uh, Stalin sent uh, a note uh, to the Allied powers in Germany uh, proposing uh, the unification of Germany on the condition of the neutralization of Germany. Uh, very strikingly, this was rejected by Konrad Adenauer, the, ch the chancellor at the time. Uh, the chancellor uh, opted for what is called Westbindung, or the integration of Germany into the Western scheme of things. And this um, was a crucial moment in modern German history. Uh, the Sonderweg uh, no longer exists as a German option. Uh, subsequently, um, there was um, in the 70s and the 80s uh, a, an evolution in German policy uh, relating to Russia, the Soviet Union at the time, and in particular focused on uh, the GDR and on the unification of Germany eventually. Uh, it was called, uh, and excuse me for using German terms, Wandel durch Ernährung, or change through rapprochement. Uh, the change in mind was uh, a double one uh, originally, and perhaps at the beginning, uh, it was uh, aimed at uh, bringing about a situation in Germany itself where there could be more meaningful uh, unification or at least closer relationship between the GDR and uh, the uh, Federal Republic, uh, but it is extended as it developed into uh, an aim also to change the very nature of the Soviet system itself. This uh, was a policy which was pursued by uh, Helmut, um, by um, Willy Brandt, uh, very much <laughs> under the influence of uh, his chief ideologue, as I would call him, Egon Bach. <laughs> And if we look at uh, Egon Barr's approach, um, although he was uh, the uh, chief negotiator for East-West questions for Billy Brandt, in, in practice he was a very nationalistic thinker, and in fact he still is. Yeah. Uh, as well as that, there came, uh, as a later stage, um, a great German concern with the possibility that Germany was to become the battlefield of a nuclear confrontation between the East and the West. Uh, this was the uh, SS-20 controversy. And uh, subsequently, uh, there was this uh, pipeline controversy, which set uh, Germany against uh, Reagan. Uh, Reagan uh, was very much against uh, the facilitation of the construction of a gas pipeline from leading from the Soviet Union to Germany. Uh, Germany uh, resisted this, uh, this uh, US hostility and financed and facilitated the construction of this pipeline, which of course uh, has reper repercussions mm. even today. You could say in a way that the fall of the wall in 1989 redealt all the cards in this uh, pan-European uh, theater, um, but uh, it might have done so, but in my reading of it, the, the Westbindung or the uh, integration or the binding of Germany into the Western scheme of things very much still stands. There is no question in my mind of any German special, uh, uh, mm. special uh, path. But the question is, how is this West uh, to be defined? Uh, in the original uh, period after the fall of the wall and the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, the German defense minister at the time, Volker Ruhe, was one of the main proponents of the extension of NATO uh, into uh, the extension of NATO membership to the uh, newly liberated states uh, in what had been the Warsaw Pact bloc. And he did this under the motto of export of stability. Mm. Uh, as he saw it, this was to export stability uh, to 
uh, what was then called Eastern Europe. Uh, it has not been uh, without uh, uh, controversy. Uh, anybody who is following uh, the uh, events of the last 20 years uh, will have seen that precisely this decision uh, to extend NATO membership right up to the Russian borders is one of the main uh, Russian points of grievance with what has happened in Europe since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, since uh, the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union, uh, the Germans, apart from Volker Ruhr, uh, have engaged in a, a policy which has been characterized as change through uh, weaving in Wandel durch Verflechtung. Uh, this policy uh, has resulted in Germany being one of Russia's main markets uh, in the world. Uh, probably uh, uh, Germany and China are uh, either second or third in, in Russia's external markets. There are 6,000 German companies uh, established in uh, Russia. 35% uh, of uh, German gas comes from uh, Russia. Uh, this, of course, is particularly important at a time of uh, an Energiewende, um, a, a, a revolutionary turnaround of whole German uh, energy policy uh, premised on the uh, rejection of nuclear energy. Uh, there are a number of other factors which come into uh, account in the uh, German approach to uh, Russia. Uh, the first is uh, German gratitude for uh, uh, the Russian role in uh, German reunification. Uh, this is a very important factor in Germany. Um, Germany sees uh, Gorbachev and uh, the uh, Russia Soviet Union led by Gorbachev as the main factor in bringing about the peaceful reunification of the country. Uh, there is, uh, secondly, there is German guilt uh, uh, at its uh, role in Russia uh, during the Second World War. Uh, this uh, guilt uh, takes the uh, concrete form of um, willingness to cut Russia more slack, to put it uh, in a, a kind of a slang way. And there is, um, uh, thirdly, uh, a tradition in the uh, Social Democratic Party mm. of which the current uh, foreign minister, uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier, is a member of um, being particularly uh, sensitive to the concerns of Russia. I mentioned Egon Barr uh, already in this connection, uh, but uh, Helmut Schmidt, uh, one of the most important SPD chancellors, is also in this school and uh, many of you will be aware of his remarks recently about the uh, Russian annexation of the Crimea. Uh, there is Gerhard Schroeder, uh, who is also a former SPD chancellor, uh, who, of course, is uh, um, very much uh, part of the uh, Russian gas trade with uh, Western Europe. And uh, it is often mentioned that Frank Walter Steinmeier himself was, I think, chief of staff of Gerhard Schroeder. Um, and, uh, people ask, well, is Frank Walter Steinmeier of the same uh, general uh, approach to, the, uh, to Russia? Uh, apart from all this, German public opinion is massively in favor of a diplomatic uh, resolution of the uh, Ukraine crisis and very much against uh, a military resolution of the crisis. Um, so, in sum, Germany uh, is very much still committed to uh, change through uh, diplomatic, uh, uh, <coughs> economic, trade relations with, with Russia. Uh, in case anybody had any doubt, uh, the leading candidate of the CSU, that's the Bavarian Party, uh, for the European elections last week, uh, came out with some disobliging remarks about Frank Walter Steinmeier's uh, attitude to the Ukrainian question. Uh, he was very quickly slapped down by his leader, uh, Seehofer, uh, and uh, indeed uh, Angela Merkel has left no doubt whatsoever <laughs> that there is no daylight between uh, her position and that of Frank Walter Steinmeier on the question of the Ukraine. So. Uh, in sum, the uh, 
position in Germany with which I personally would agree is that there can be no resolution of the crisis in the Ukraine uh, without Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, this does not mean that uh, we support Russia. Uh, Angela Merkel certainly doesn't take the position mm. that she supports the Russian annexation of the Crimea. But uh, it is clear uh, that Russia uh, has to be made part of an overall European security architecture, uh, not unconditionally, but uh, under conditions that we can all accept. So that is my reading of the uh, current situation as far as Germany is concerned. Thank you very much. Okay, so that concludes the... the